Welcome back. Now it's time for the front burner issue on U45 Morning Show, the TGIF edition. Interesting fact. We are lightening up today, but of course we're going to be touching salient issues and matters that borders on young people in our country. Now, understanding that the youth actually constitute the larger population of this great nation, we cannot but continue to hit the subject matter on youth's restiveness, youth and social vices, youth and delinquencies that we have, plus the fact that there are opportunities. We tried to establish something here uh, yeah, 24 hours ago where we talked about the number of young people that does the job of Ag Bureau in Lagos as a case in point. Now, if you drive past the Lagos Badagri Expressway, you, when you get to uh, the My2 extension heading towards uh, the Alakija, which is a long stretch, the number of young people that does this job is alarming. When you see them, how energetic they are, and you say, if you push these ones into the workforce for the country on something more positive, do you know how that can contribute to our gross domestic product as a people? These are some of the issues. But of course, we look at where the challenges come from. Some homes are not balanced. Some single parents raise them. Some out of their own volition, they decided to go the way of the vices in the society. Because some of us, too, grew up in the same circle with them. But the ability to actually decipher what you want and take yourself to the positive part is very, very key. I used to establish the fact that growing up in Ajegule, I had opportunities to mingle with the odds. But two things in mind. First of all, where are you coming from? What are the parental touch for me as an individual? Mm. Then the ability to say, okay, I'm not going to participate in X, Y, Z activities. That really helped. But how many young people have such thoughts? This and more we shall be looking at on the issue today. Basically, the youths are, are still um, finding it difficult to make the decision. And it's funny when you see those who live outside Lagos your friends or colleagues who are youth as well, who live outside Lagos, are doing better than you, but still look up to you because you live in Lagos. So expectation is high. So the expectation is high. But meanwhile, they are actually living better. The hustle and bustle of Lagos, the, the, the whole um, revenue, the income, everybody sees and wow. So the opportunities are there in Lagos. So they look up to you. Meanwhile, they are actually living better than you. <laughs> so it's, irony it's, it's of a, life. It's a thing. It's an irony of life. You no, know, it's a, it's a thing of the mind. If they can see those opportunities, and they can get it, but you are in the center of the opportunity and you're not making use of it, then we have a problem. Okay, so it becomes the matter of uh, this one have the head, but does not have cap. The one that <laughs> has the cap does not have the head. <laughs> What a situation there. We'll see how we bring up our guests to join us in the conversation. Three of them in a row. We're going to be doing a very fast uh, chat with them. The first will be the Vice President for Junior Chambers International, uh, Mr. Ligali. Let's see how he gets into this conversation with us, if he's ready from our tech crew to bring him virtual into this conversation. So while we're looking at that, uh, the next person will be uh, Hezekiah Adim, who actually runs Triple uh, C. He's a creative artist. He does a lot with his hand, from painting to uh, draftman to actually getting young people uh, put their skill sets into lightning of event and the rest. Plus, the third one, who is a fashion preneur, uh, Elias Nasir runs a fashion brand and he's going to be talking about the opportunities in that particular sector now we might be saying that there is cash crunch uh, there are challenges in the society but trust me people must go on clothing which is very important so in the value chain of the fashion industry what are the skill sets that you can pick up the interesting fact is that sometimes we look at these things as being cumbersome, but trust me, you can have a, an area of specialization. Uh, in the course of engaging entrepreneurs in the fashion industry, I get to hear about something called pattern drafting. Do you know that if you have the skill set for draftman, you could be a professional pattern drafting, pattern drafting uh, specialist for fashion designers? So it means you have clients that you do pattern drafting for. Yeah. So most times we look at these things in unism, we don't look at it holistically, okay? This is big. Mm -hmm. For instance, in agriculture, the value chain is several, and people don't see it. There are technology that you can deploy into 
the agri business. Mm -hmm. But when you hear agriculture, most of you say, ah, me, who, and cutlass, what? <laughs> I can't do it. So times have really changed. You know, we had a conversation with a very young Nigerian here, uh, Confidence Odionye, the founder of Big Drone. And guess what? He deploys drone to farms. Farmers now use drones to drop their to seeds. Drop their Instead seed. of yeah. walking that long stretch, yes. in the course of walking, you're destroying some of the things you've actually planted. You know, we have to innovate. We have to push the boundaries. I have mentioned this several times, that Nigeria as a nation or as a people, one thing that we really need to understand is the word education. It's a very vast word. Mm. What kind of education do you need? There are different kinds of education. We hear agriculture and majority run away from it because we are thinking ho and cutlass. Meaning a lot of us are not updated. The youths, the Nigerian youths, many are not yet updated to know that hmm. technology has advanced massively in agriculture to the point of using drone to deploy, to seed. deploy seeds. <laughs> and then we, the, the, the highest someone can even think of is, okay, maybe a tractor to cultivate or to till, till. the soil. We don't know that technology has gone far. Absolutely. So it's a matter of being updated. The moment you are well updated, you are knowledgeable on that field you are interested in as a youth, you begin to work towards it. So it's based on the level of information passed to you or how much information you're able to get. And even with the information you have, how well do you handle it? There, uh, we have a, 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 I met someone who's a fashion designer and she has been doing so well in you know, designing this uh, thing, this pattern on dresses to the point now she got the machine for it. And I was like, wow, how did you do it? She said mm, that she saved up from the money she's been making, that she has always wanted to have her machine that makes uh, the pattern, the patterns for clothes, the designs. And I'm like, is this the type? She said, like, she wants a bigger one, that there's a bigger one there. I'm like, wow, what can you do? She pays her rent, she does so many things. From that little one that she bought, she does a whole lot, meaning she is well updated on that particular machine of uh, designing patterns on clothes. And so she got it and continued. And she's looking towards getting a bigger one. So meaning the more you update yourself on the, the more information, the you more you, you get. So how well informed are the Nigerian youths? The creative industry and how well informed? The, the ones in the beauty pageant, you know, the, the pageants, pageantry, how well informed are they? Must you sleep with uh, the, uh, uh, the producers? The producer, and the uh, the okay, guy, let's see how it goes. You get a role, you, 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 you get let's, let's get into the conversation, contract. Rom, with uh, uh, Tosi Legali this morning, who is actually the vice president for JCI International. Uh, good morning, if you can hear us, let's get into the subject matter. Now, your organization does a lot around leadership, which is the primary. Uh, one of the statutory things we see you do in the society. Let's speak into the subject matter. When you hear youth and mentorship, what comes to mind before we even go into how you as an individual and GCI is actually doing this? Okay, thank you so very much. And I'm really glad to be here this morning. Uh, okay, so when you talk about youth and uh, mentorship, let's first get to understand the two definitions. So Fantastic. Say. Uh, who is, uh, who, 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 what, what do we mean by uh, a youth? It's actually a period between childhood and uh, adult age. So which means it is a transformative uh, age bracket, so to say. So these are young individuals who are preparing themselves to become adults. You know, some people feel those above 50 are still, but, but it's actually um, uh, the period between that childhood and uh, the adult age, so to say. Then let's now link it to, let's get to understand what uh, mentorship is all about. So this is the guidance provided by an individual who is being regarded as a mentor, especially an experienced person in a company or, uh, or educational uh, institution. So it's actually a period of time during which a person receives um, guidance from a mentor. Mm -hmm. Now, you said, it, we've uh, come to agreement that um, the youth is actually an individual within the age of um, the childhood and uh, adulthood. So who now needs to be mentored, who needs to be uh, uh, under 
a form of guidance hmm. so he can actually have soft landing. You know, I heard the guest speakers who uh, talked about a whole lot of things that uh, young people are doing. So uh, youth and mentorship is what we actually need now because the youth are no more the leaders of tomorrow. They hmm. are now, they are the leaders of today. So they are meant to embrace um, the... Let, let me let me come from the digital space. They are meant to embrace the new innovations and then bringing them to light. But there are people who were used to the traditional method. So when innovation comes in, a lot of people will not want to embrace it. But those people who have been experienced in the traditional method can also still give you guidance. The only thing is for us to now learn how to merge both knowledge and experiences because Fantastic. the problem we are having as young people now not getting to be mentored because we feel we know uh, today's way of doing things better than the older generation and we can't afford to take uh, uh, their own experience and knowledge away from it so that's the basic uh, understanding of uh, okay internet. Let, let's let's go one step forward now um JCI is quite old. We know uh, your success stories, your antecedents in terms of uh, youth engagement. But uh, a closer look at uh, what the Nigerian uh, young person is facing right now. We saw how Nigerian youth try to push the agenda of credibility and leadership XYZ. If you, if you have an opportunity to speak on the topic, youth and mentorship with a focus on leading from within, leading from within, understanding that we've not really been given that opportunity. Some, some young people are beginning to cross into government now, we're seeing them. Uh, what would be your, your introductory uh, statements to young people if you have them seated in front of you? Okay, thank you. So I would advise that uh, they focus more on what we call 360 degree leadership. Hmm. So okay. 360 degree leadership means you can actually lead you know 360 you can actually lead from anywhere so in the world i don't want to say nigeria because this is a global leadership is actually a global thing Great. so in the world a lot of people feel lead, um the problem is actually from the top some say the problem is from the bottom you know but what i'm saying now is if the bottom is not working the leaders what would they do if the if the top sorry if the top is not working what would the bottom do but the only way out of this is when we all understand the place of leading from wherever we are so Fantastic. as young people we shouldn't wait until we because that's what jci that's what we actually preach so we you do not expect to wait to be an office holder before you start making impact in the society so as young people, it is expected of you the little knowledge and experience that you have presently, whether you are 10, whether you are 15, whether you are 25, whether you are 40 years old, the little knowledge, because JCI is actually for young people within the ages of 18 to 40, because we believe within that period, you can actually make a whole lot of change that will prepare uh, the unborn generation, that will make the unborn generation, because you still have that uh, uh, strength and all of that. So wherever you are within that space of 18 to 40, you can actually lead in your society and make things so you can create sustainable solution in your society Great. when you discover that uh, maybe a lot of people are dumping refuse on your street you shouldn't wait for government to come and solve that problem for you because that eventually is actually going to cause uh, you're going you're gonna to have a drainage uh, issue Issues. and then you'll be you'll be telling government that oh there's flooding in your in, in your community fantastic but you've been noticing you've been noticing individuals who have been dumping refuse or, uh, in, in the drainage system, what has been your role as mm. an individual? I do personally, because like I said, that's what we do. So I'm not a politician, but when I see the menace in my own society, I stand out. I, 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 I have to stand and face mm. the individuals that know, please, we can't afford to continue doing this because if you keep doing this, it's actually going to affect us and your born generation. So when every youth across the country is taking necessary action, which we call active citizen. So there's mm. a difference between a citizen and a, an active citizen. So mm. what makes you a better individual in the society as a young person 
is when you notice this thing because the old individuals they might not be as agile as you are they might not be available to see most of this menace mm. but you we move around we drive around we jog around we do a whole lot of things in the society so the moment you see the menace you take action immediately and you Great. sensitize you know i i love uh, the, the the guest speaker i said everything revolves around education so you need to now reorientate the mind of the people a lot of people don't know that what they are doing is actually wrong Okay. You know, when you keep doing something wrong, it, 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 it becomes a norm. Mm -hmm. So these are the fundamentals that I Fantastic. we need to... De De thank you very much, Ulu Atosi. You, you've really established some of the salient points. And of course, my colleague here, uh, Raymond, is about to get into the matter with you. Now, Raymond, just 